Hello, fourth grade. Today we're going to look at a clock, and we're going to look at how angles and fractions relate to a clock. So I provided you an image of a clock that you can print out, and if you don't have a printer, then you can just draw your own. So pause this video and get ready to go. So the supplies you'll need today, you'll need a nice sharp pencil, your geometry journal or your math journal, the protractor that you have been using, and a clock. I forgot, you also need a ruler, and you'll need a bigger ruler than the one that is part of your protractor. You'll notice that your ruler has a point in the center. We're going to use that point as our vertex. And so what I'd like you to do is take your ruler and we're going to draw a line segment that goes from the vertex straight up to the 12. Now you might notice that there is a darker spot right on the 12 as there is on the 1, the 2, and the 3 as you go around. Now you know from telling time that each of those dots, those darker dots, represent five minutes. The smaller dots in between the larger dots represent one minute each. So now let's draw a line, a line segment from the center to the three. So now let's take your protractor and let's measure the angle that we've created with the center of the circle being the vertex. So line up the vertex where it goes. I'm putting the line that went to the 3 along this 0 degree line. And you'll see that the line going straight up should go through 90 degrees. This is a 90 degree angle. And we call a 90 degree angle a right angle. And I'm going to draw a square corner here because that's how we indicate a right angle. Now, uh, we could continue thinking about this as um, part of the circle or part of the clock. What part of the clock does this 90 degree angle represent? Well, you might notice that it is one fourth of the whole circle because we could repeat this if we continued our line from 12 down to 6. So let's do that. And now we have created another one-fourth of a circle. And if we extended our line that goes to 3 across to the other side through 9, you can clearly see that we have four one-fourths of a circle. Now each of those one-fourths is the same right angle as we got in the first one-fourth. So this 90 degree angle that came from the first one-fourth is congruent to the 90 degree angle on the second one-fourth. And every one-fourth of a circle was created by drawing a 90 degree angle. So what we just drew showed us that one-fourth of an hour is the same as 15 minutes. Now that is because when the minute hand travels from the 12 to the 3, that is a time frame of 15 minutes. Now, if we were to think of the clock as a circle, we know that one-fourth of the circle resulted in a 90-degree angle. So clocks, because they are circles, we can think of them both in terms of fractions, in terms of minutes, and in terms of angles. So what if we put two of those one-fourths together? Two one-fourths is equivalent to one-half. So a half of an hour would be two of those one-fourths put together. So if one-fourth of an hour is 15 minutes, one-half of an hour 
is 30 minutes. And if we were to think about this in terms of angles, half of a circle would be two one-fourths of a circle. And we know that one one-fourth is 90 degrees. So two one-fourths would be 180 degrees. So you probably know my next question. If we know one-fourth of an hour is 15 minutes, what would three-fourths of an hour be? And if we know one-fourth of a circle is a 90 degree angle, what's three-fourths of a circle? Can you answer these questions? Well, three-fourths of an hour would be 45 minutes, and three-fourths of a circle would be 270 degrees of an angle. So let's break it down even further. If we started with our fourths of a clock, and you notice that each time we drew a line, we drew completely through the center of the circle to the opposite side. If you remember from when we talked about circles, that's called a diameter. I'd like to draw more diameters here so that we connect every number to the number across from it. So from the 1 to the 7, from the 2 to the 8, from the 4 to the 10, and from the 5 to the 11. Now, how many equal pieces do you see? Count them up. Well, hopefully you see that there are 12 equal pieces, which makes sense because our numbers go from 1 to 12. So every one of these slices is 1 12th of the circle. So now what I'd like to know is what is the angle measurement formed from each of the two uh, line segments. The space in between them gives what kind of angle. So let's use your protractor. Pick one of them. Line up your protractor correctly. And what measurement did you find? Well, I'm measuring between 2 and 3. I have the vertex lined up. I have the 3 that's falling straight across, and I can see that the line reading to 2 goes through the 30 degree mark. Let's try another one. If I rotate this and try a different angle, depending on how well I drew my angles, my lines, I should see it's also 30 degrees. So let's think about why this is. If every one of these is a 30 degree angle, does that make sense? How many angles did we draw? We drew 12 of them. And if every one of them is 30 degrees, 12 times 30 is 360. 360 degrees is a complete rotation of a circle. It is the sum of four one-fourth angles. Each one-fourth was 90 degrees, and 90 times four is 360 degrees. So let's go back to the chart we were making before. One-twelfth of an hour. If an hour is 60 minutes, one-twelfth of that, meaning each section that we drew was equivalent to five minutes. And our measurement using the protractor showed us that five minutes was a 30 degree angle. Now does that make sense? If we were to look at four twelfths of an hour and four twelfths of a circle, four twelfths of an hour, if one twelfth is five minutes, four of them would be five times four, which is 20 minutes. And if one twelfth of an hour is 30 degrees, four of them would be 120 degrees.
So some of you may notice that 4 twelfths is not in its simplest form. 4 twelfths would simplify to 1 third. So does this make sense? 1 third of an hour is 20 minutes. 1 hour is 60 minutes. And if we take one-third of 60, it's like taking 60 and dividing it by 3, we do get 20 minutes. And if a circle contains 360 degrees, one-third of 360 degrees would be like taking 360 degrees and dividing it by 3, and we would get a 120-degree angle. All right, so one other thing you need to know is that when we look at a clock and we're telling time, the hands on the clock move in this direction, right? They go to the right and down and around, and we call that clockwise. That is a clockwise direction. Now, when a motion goes in the opposite direction, when it goes to the left and around, we call that counterclockwise. I gotta spell that right. Clockwise. And obviously that would be the opposite of clockwise. So here are three clocks with no numbers, only shading. So on this top one, if the minute hand had traveled this distance on a clock, it would represent 15 minutes, which is one-fourth of an hour. On the second one, if the minute hand had traveled this far through half of the clock, that would be a half turn, which is um, 180 degrees because it's 90 degrees twice. This last one would be three-fourths of a turn around the clock, which would be 90, 90, and 90 degrees added together, which would give you 270 uh, degrees, which is equivalent to 45 minutes. Now for today's assignment, when you're working in your book and in your practice book, pretty much you're asked for the fraction of the clock that has uh, that's being shaded, not the number of minutes. But you can include that if you would like. Have a good day. Bye-bye.